So, Pretef is easy. What we're going to do today is that we'll get an overview of the requirements and then the concepts you need to understand to be able to do the project. What is a project structure? How do you implement a printf facility? And how do you test your printf? So that is what we're going to do today. Okay. So let's talk about the overview of the requirements without um, wasting a lot of time. The first thing you need to understand is that it is a team project. That means that you're going to create a repository and then invite your partner or as a collaborator. And I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that. I'm going to run you guys through it pretty quickly and then you're going to see how to do that. So I just go straight to my GitHub, go into your GitHub account, and then the repository that ALX is asking you to create. I'm going straight to the printer project, so just stay with me. Good. Now, the different thing about this project from the others is that um, with the other projects, you're going to see several files that you have to create in which your source code is going to go. But with this project, all you're going to be seeing is a GitHub repository called printf, and that is all you're going to be seeing. So the difficulty and the challenge is that you may not even know which file to create for which task, and then which code is going to go to which task. And it becomes really challenging, especially when you don't know how to start, how to even go about the whole thing. But before that, just go into your GitHub account, and then create the repository. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to come to new repository. My turn is kind of slow. Sorry about that. I'm going to call this, this repository buddies. All right. Buddies, you give it whatever description you want to give it here. I just type in some random figures. And then I create a repository. Very simple and straight to the point. You already know how to do this. So the next thing you want to do is to just copy the URL of the repo, which is an HTTPS URL go straight into your sandbox i'm not going to go into my sandbox because the alx sandbox is really slow so i'm going to work here in my local terminal all right just as I, I do usually for you guys so just gonna fire it up and what you want to do is you just paste now before that you want to get clone that repo so what what i'm teaching you right now is how to set up the project for you and your partner to collaborate right so you're just gonna get clone and then paste in the link of the repository and you want to get your access token you guys already know how to generate access token so i'm not gonna bother about that all right so you just generate some access token let me just find some random one take this one and then you know what to do with it you're just gonna paste it in say at github.com great so now I've cloned into the repo called buddies, but your repo is going to be called printf. When I'm done, I'm going to cd into that repository. Now I'm inside the repository called buddies. All right. Awesome. Then the next thing, you know, you just want to create your readme and give it some descri description. All right. So readme.md has just created within some description. Whatever you want to see over here, just say, okay. So I'm just going to exit. When I get status, you're going to realize that we've created a new readme file. Okay. Let me clear my screen. You know what, what you, you got to do. Just get um, add. I'm really going fast at this stage because you guys already know the hang of this. You guys already know how to do this. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time through these motions. So you get add, get commit. And you, you give it a message. Then you get push. Yeah, you can go ahead and speak. I'm all yes. No, I see Georgian turn up. I'm wondering if you, he's going to ask a question or if he's on yeah. the so, so Sure, sure. Go, go ahead. I've already been interrupted, so I wanted him to go ahead, but no problem. I'm just going to continue. So then you just get to push what you've done to the repository. So now when I go into my GitHub account, now I'm going to refresh the repo and you're going to see that the readme that I just created with the content is reflecting here in my repo. Now this is, this is what you know how to do. This is what you've been doing all this while. There's no, there's no need for anyone to teach you this, but now you need to invite your partner as a collaborator for the project. How do you do that? And I need you to pay particular attention here. All right. When you are inside the repo, you have to, 
whether you or your partner has to first set up the repository. Both of you are not going to have the repository in your GitHub account. Only one person will have the repository in their GitHub account. The moment the two of you have the repository in both of your GitHub account, you might risk scoring zero on the project. That is very critical, so you need to hear me out. Only one person should create a repository, then that one person will send an invite to the other partner to become a collaborator of the repository. So that is what, what I'm doing now. Assuming I'm the first partner, partner A, okay? So I've created a repo, now I'm gonna invite the next person to come and collaborate to the repository. You see this set settings icon up here? You just gotta click on it. Then, see this left bar over here? You're gonna see collaborators. Just click on that. So I'm just gonna click on collaborators. Then it's gonna bring you to this interface. Then you're gonna see that you have the opportunity to invite anyone, anyone as a collaborator. Add people. Then you can now enter the email address of anyone. Let me just enter my other email address, okay? Just so that I don't waste a lot of time. So I'm gonna say, so I'm just gonna inv invite this email of mine and send an email to myself. Okay. So now, this is what's going to happen. The other partner that you have sent an email to is going to receive a mail, an invite in their mail. So that is what I'm doing right now. I'm going into my mail. Okay, so you can go ahead and ask. Yes, go ahead, go ahead and ask as I wait. First thing you are presenting the invite for you so that I can make it much more easier for the person that you. After they have sent it, I'm working on the same time. I'm working on different invites. Because I know that after that, we have to do the other side of the world. I'm saying, I'm really working on different branches and then we have to push them to the main or we'll all be working on main and then we'll keep on pushing as well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to answer that. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Okay, so like I was saying, now I'm in the other partner's email address. Right, and this is what the other partner is gonna see in their email address. So this is the invite. I'm going to view the invitation. So assuming I'm the other partner currently, I'm gonna view the invitation and accept the invitation. So I'm gonna accept it. It says that the Leo invited you to collaborate. So I just accepted the invite. Now you're gonna see that immediately it's gonna take you into the repository of the one who created it, the partner who created it. So assuming I'm working with Abena and Abena created a repository, I think Abena, we should share the video that we did this afternoon with them so that, because that one we demonstrated with you and I, so that's easier. This time around, I'm trying to do and play two roles at the same time. So it might get confusing, but we share the video we had this afternoon with them. It will be a little bit clearer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Um, the audio was quite you have to use headphones. Well, yes, I get it. As you can see, it's saying that the invite was invalid because I'm the same person and I've linked both um, email addresses to this GitHub account already. But at least you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. So what's going to happen when your other partner accepts the invite is that it's going to bring them to the repository, repository that the, the first partner created. Then you can now clone the repository as the second partner. So because I'm the same person, I can't go through that motion here. But then the other partner just clones the repository to their local system. Then they can push to it. And then they can pull from it. So in my terminal, assuming I'm the other partner, before I do anything, I need to listen to this very carefully. Before I do anything, remember that the partner A has already pushed content to the repository. He created a readme and pushed it to the repository. So you as the second partner, before you do anything, after cloning the repository to your sandbox, you have to get pull. If you do not get pull, you're gonna have conflict because there's content upstream that you don't have in your local system. So before you do anything, you always have to get pull. Whether there is information or not, just to be on the safe side, always run get pull before you try to push information to the repository. 
if there's no information to pull down it's just gonna tell you that already up to date just like you see in my terminal here right now so basically this is it about collaboration one person creates a repository sends an invite to the other person the other person receives the invite close the repository to their sandbox and then starts working so i push then um there's change in in the repository that abna does not have all right then abna will pull get pull then abna will also push get push then i over here will also get pull so that at the end of the day all of us have the same files in our sandbox or our local system is that very clear are there any questions on that before i proceed let me go see what's happening in the i have a question please yes you sure go ahead What's, what's to clarify? Are you saying that like if as the one that created the repository mm -hmm. and my partner has this tool, the repository and gets pulled in? Don't. From my, if this from the one that created the repository, I get add, I get from A and then get pulled. Are you saying that I get pulled that repository again after my partner has been pulled? I think that's where I'm. Here in your question, you are the creator of the repository, right? Good. So you created a repository. You already have content you are pushed to GitHub. Your partner receives the invite and becomes a collaborator. But there is content in the repository that your partner does not have in their sandbox. Okay. So the first thing your partner got to do is to clone the repository. So number one, the partner B has to clone the repository okay when you clone the repository you have all the information in there now partner b can choose to create a file let's say he creates a source file printf.c puts in some content and then the partner will push it to get out but you the creator of the of the repository does not have the content that partner b pushed in your local system when you go into github you as a creator of the repository does not have the content that partner b pushed to the repository so before you do anything and push it to get up you first of all has have to get pulled to your sandbox i hope that is very clear you don't worry i'm i'm gonna share the link of the um the session that we did, did this afternoon and it's gonna become very clear to you yeah so i'm going on so back to my slide, all right? Yeah, honey, hear me. Okay, yeah, good. Yes, I can hear you. I'm using a tweet steady before, but it's fine. All right. So now you have set up your repo. You know that it, uh, it's a collaborative project that you're about to do. The next thing you want to do is that check the test files. It will give you an idea of what to expect in the project. And the third thing you got to do is to read through the project. Okay, so let's just go and get an overview of this whole thing that I'm talking about. Okay, so let me just go into the project. When you open the project, don't fret. You're going to see a number of things inside. There are some resources that you can read through and all. But that is not the first thing that you should focus on immediately. Okay, now, the first thing that you should do is to come into the test. These are um, things that are allowed for you to use, but... Before you do anything, come into the text box, this terminal, all right? It's going to give you a fair idea of what is expected in the printf function that you are about to create. Because this terminal, this gray terminal that you see over here is simply a test file, all right? So Alex at Ubuntu is the user of this gray terminal. And then the CAT command, you already know what it does. It lists the content of a file. So what we are seeing here is simply that content of the file main.c is being listed in this terminal and then in here what do we see we can see a main function all right then we see a variable len declared this is a variable and we see another um, variable on um, we see another variable ui of data type on signed int and we see a pointer that has been declared of a void data type so this is a void data type pointer the name of the pointer is ettr address these are things we already know but this is what i want you to see you realize that the printer function that you have created is being put to the test then over here the printer's printer function is being asked to print a simple string 
and that is what printf does if you look at the output over here you can see that that um simple sentence sentence has been printed so this is the output of the first two tests okay so you see first test second test then the second printf test you see that is printing the length of a string so you see percent d here and then you see percent i percent d percent i and it's printing the length of a string so if you come and see the output you can see those two um, arguments here so this is the output of that test i'm not going to go through everything but i just want you to have a fair idea and then the next thing you see you can see that this one is um let me take the next test like uh let's take percent x okay so you see that at this place your printf is being put to the test of percent s x which prints an uh, hexadecimal number and as you can see the output is correct over here so basically what i'm trying to show you is that this gray box you see over here is everything that you're going to do in the project so if you're able to grasp what is being shown you in this terminal you are done with the printer project you take it one step at a time and then you know all the requirements of the printer project okay so what i'm going to do now is that i'm just going to go into vs code okay i'm going to show you two very important things all you need to know to be able to kill this printer project are number one how to format strings number one how to format strings and number two variadic functions the others are just coming to help you um finish the project up but if you know how to format strings and variety functions you've done 70 percent of the project that is very simple okay so over here let's just try a few things this is a very simple c function a c program that we see over here i'm just gonna get rid of this let's just beef it up a bit great i hope you can see my screen thank you so this is a simple um c program that you already know i'm gonna get rid of this so i'm gonna put the standard library printf to the test which we already know so i can print f a simple string so when i run this code i'm gonna have a simple string in my output all right so as you can see over here i have a string in my, i think somebody got a mute their feet so i have a simple string over here in the output okay one printer function must be able to print a string a simple string all right sorry people just keep calling me then number two your printer function must be able to handle format specifiers so number two okay wonderful now when you go into the test box you're gonna see first that you have to take care of percent D, which you know prints an integer then percent i then i also saw percent c okay now watch something carefully the entire project is divided into two categories okay if you look at the first tax tax zero it says that write a function that produces output according to a format then it gives you the prototype of the printer function that you're supposed to create. Now hear me out carefully because this is very important. The second requirement says that the function that you're going to create is supposed to retain the number of characters printed. Okay, I'll explain that to you. Then you're supposed to write the output to the standard output and then the format is supposed to be a character sp uh, string. Then now for the first task you're not supposed to do much all you have to do is to make sure that you handle the format specifiers percent c percent s and then the percent sign what do these things mean okay i've been talking to you about format strings format strings what is a format string now if you give printf a string let's say i tell printf that my name is leo if i give this string to printf what is printf gonna do printf is just gonna echo it back to me 
printf is just going to echo it back to me because it's a simple string lit literal okay but now i can decide to give printf a format string i'll tell printf that my name is a placeholder which is percent s okay so now what i'm doing is that i'm creating a format string so i tell printf that my name is percent s and printf understands that this percent s over here is supposed to act as a placeholder that is going to hold the a certain argument the percent s over here printf understands that it's supposed to be a placeholder that is going to hold a certain argument when that argument i can give it to printf and tell printf that that argument is going to be leo in quotation marks in parenthesis so what you see over here my name is percent s then i give printf the argument leo is what is called a format string it is this what you see over here is what is called a format string and according to the task that you have been given this is the first thing that you are supposed to do you are giving the prototype of the printf function and you are giving the parameters and the first parameter of the printf function you are giving is a format string that is why you see the character data type over here the cons you see over here simply means that it's a constant which means that whatever format string you supply to the printf function cannot be altered right then these three dots you see over here represent a function that can take many many arguments what do i mean by that so let's go into our visual studio code and let's create a very simple function that adds two numbers so let's create a function call it int add then inside that function we are gonna take two parameters so int number one and int number two okay then inside that code, we are going to return number one plus number two. Very simple. Very simple. Okay. Now, if I come into my main function, I'm going to get um, comment out this print string. Let me comment it out. All right. Then inside my main function, I'm going to call my add function. So I'm going to say add two and five. Okay. Well, let me give it to a variable. Okay, so let me say int sum equals to the function. No, no. I, I, if I use Betty, it's gonna cause change. It. It's gonna take a lot of time. So let me just go with the explanation. Then later when I come in with Betty and all that. Okay. So I've call the function over here which takes two parameters and i'm one and i'm two and i'm telling the function to add two and five so when i run this code i'm supposed to get seven okay let me run it again I'm just get rid of this terminal sometimes i have this problem oh hold on i've not printed the sum come on sorry about that so i'm gonna print f sum Because it's an integer, you know we're gonna use percent %d. Then we're gonna print sum. Very simple. As a matter of fact, let's put it on the new line. Okay, so I'm gonna run my code one more time. As you can see, the function that I created returns seven because it adds num one and num two. But here is the problem. If I increase the number of arguments that the add function takes, it's supposed to take two arguments, as you can see, num one and num two. But here in the case, I've given it three arguments. So I'm going to run my code again. And then immediately it tells me that I've run into an error. Now I've, I've told the compiler that the function I'm creating called add is supposed to take two parameters, num1 and num2. But in calling the function, I've given the function three arguments. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way in C, all right? But for some reason, as for printf, whenever we use the printf function, we can give it so many things and printf does not get tired for some reason. So I'm going to print f. Let me just comment this out. All right. So I'm going to print f and I'm going to give you the first argument. I can tell printf that my name is Leo, just like I showed you. And then you know printf is going to print this for me easily. 
Okay, very simple. So I can also tell the same printf, which is a function, all right, that my name is, and I'll put a place holder here, holder here and say percent s. Then I'll tell printf that the percent s is a place holder for the argument Leo. Okay, now when I print this, it's supposed to go in M quotes. So Leo. Now when I print this, you're going to realize that printf will immediately give me the output. My name is Leo, just as you can see down there. Now, I can also tell printf that in the same output, so my name is percent s and I am 31 years grown. All right. So instead of putting in the 31 here, I can put in a format specifier, percent D, and I'll come and tell printf that the percent D I give to it is actually the number 31. Okay. Then I'm going to print this out. And as you can see, printf wouldn't shut. It tells me that my name is Liu and I'm 31 years old. And I can keep, I can keep giving printf arguments over and over and over again. And printf doesn't seem to get tired of arguments. For some reason, printf is able to take so many arguments without getting tired. And the question is, how does the function printf do that? All these things that I'm telling you is what is going to determine how you implement your printf function. Because your printf function is supposed to be a replica of the printf of the standard library. So that means that everything that you know that the printf does, printf does, your, your printf that you're going to, your custom printf you're going to implement should also be able to do that. And then you know we can keep going on and on with several format specifiers. We don't have the time. Make time and read, percent s, percent c, percent whatever, whatever. But you don't have to focus on everything. All you have to focus on currently are the format specifiers that ALX is asking you to implement. And for the first task, it says that you should implement for percent %c, percent %s, and then the percent %sign. Why the percent %sign? Because you know it's a special character. But for instance, if I want to print f again, if I say print f and I bring percent immediately print f sees percent it knows that i'm going to bring um a certain format specifier so if i print this i'm definitely going to run into an error it says that it says percent what is percent it's expecting an argument so if i want to print the percent sign itself it means that i have to bring another percent sign to escape the first percent sign now when i print this i'm safely going to get the percent sign as you see over here okay and then there are other special characters such as the backslash and many, many others. So the first thing that ALX is asking you to do is to implement a printf function that is able to print the percent %c character, the percent %s, and the percentage sign. That is all you are going to do for the first task. And this is the first mandatory task. Look at it carefully. This is mandatory. Then the second task is also mandatory. And for the second task, you're supposed to implement percent %d and percent i and they are saying that you don't even have to take care of the flags you don't have to take care of the width you don't have to take care of the precision you don't have to take care of the length modifiers all you have to do is just handle percent d percent i and over here handle percent c percent s and the percent sign you don't have to handle the weight the precision at the length and the flags and that is all the project is asking for so if you look at it carefully the tax zero is an uh, it's a mandatory tax Tax one is a mandatory tax and the rest are all advanced tax. Guys, look at this. This simply means that if you are able to do task one and tax, tax I mean tax zero and tax one, you have a hundred percent on the project already. Everything else is just gonna be extra max. So what is the need of fretting over here? If you are if you manage to conquer task zero and one, you already have a hundred percent. You see? So wh why why the panic? Okay, so you just have to take your time. Make sure that you kill the one and the, I mean, the zero and the one very well. Then you, you are at peace. You know that whatever else I'm doing is just extra marks. Okay, and that is very important to understand. And interestingly, to be able to do the zero and the one is very, very simple. And that is what I'm, sh I'm showing you. I've already taught you about functions. If you've not watched it, you already know where, the, where to find the videos. Now, this is a function called printf. This is the return type. This is the name of the function. 
underscore printf and as you can see you are seeing a format string over here there are two main ways of declaring strings and this syntax shouldn't confuse you and then the three dots you see over here represents a function that can take multiple arguments just like i showed you the add function that we created is supposed to take num1 and num2 now we added a third number and we run into errors but as for printf printf can take so so many arguments without getting tired and the reason is that it falls under the category of a class of functions known as variadic functions so if you alx is asking you to implement a printf function then you know that you are about to implement a variadic function it's very simple and straight to the point and how do you implement variadic functions we don't have a lot of time so i mean we're going to meet tomorrow too at 6 p.m i'm going to take my time and break them down for you properly but for today it's just an overview to um give you like a fair idea of what to expect for the project so for a variadic function you know that you have to bring the return type as you made it's an integer you bring the return type then the name of the function so let me say function name all right then the add you i mean the parameters that the function is supposed to take what you do is that you bring the first parameter you bring the first parameter and for alx the first parameter that they gave you is a format string i told you there are two ways of declaring strings to declare a string you can either do car they bring the name of the string let's say we call the string str and you bring your array which is this and you see that this string is called Ishira. Ishira. All right. My pe pencil is acting up. Okay, don't worry. Sorry. Then the second way you can declare a string is to declare a format string. Okay, so I can also say car. And instead of just bringing the string, I can indicate that the string is a pointer. Okay. Then I'm going to see that this string is called a banner. Okay. So all these you see over here are ways of declaring strings. Now, ALX is not using the first way. ALX is using this format. But for some reason, they want you to understand that this string that you are declaring cannot be changed. So they are telling you that it is a constant. And whenever you see the constant data type, it simply means that the um, variable, the, the value of the variable you have created cannot be altered. It remains constant throughout the execution of the code at runtime. So that is simply what this constant means. So ALX tells you that the first argument for this printer function is a format string. So it's a constant. Then they bring the name, the data type of the um, function, the parameter, which is car. They let you understand that it is a pointer that points to um, so car that points to the name of the string, which is what? format so this format you see right here is simply the name of the string they could have named it anything they could have named the string they could have named it um whatever they could have named it the nest or whatever name there is but they decided to call it format then when they were done they brought three ellipses i mean three dots for you to know that it is a variadic function and there is a way by which you implement a variadic function for you to know how to take multiple argument for you to do that there is a standard library that you need to import which is the standard std arg a pencil is really acting up today i don't know why so let me just type it out so it comes out really clear so this is what i'm talking about boot the standard argument all right dot h that as you know, this standard argument allows you to use four very cardinal functions. The first one is the variable argument list. The second one is the variable argument start. And the third one is the variable argument arg. The final one is the variable argument end. And interestingly, when you look into your project requirements, these are the same arguments that ALX is saying you can use. So you see write, you see malloc, you see free, you see the 
variable argument start, variable argument end, variable argument copy, variable argument arg. So let me leave you with these final words. Today, I just came to give you an overview, just to let you um, have a general overview of the project. Let me give you final words before I open the room for questions. Number one, when you open the project, go into the test box. The text box is going to give you, I'm talking about this text box, it's going to give you a fair idea of every functionality that ALX is looking for. Then when you are done going through the text box, look at the prototype of the function printf. The moment you look at the prototype of the function printf, it tells you that this is a variadic function. Right now, you know that as you are, as you are leaving this meeting, you are supposed to go and read about string formatting. Go and watch YouTube. I'm going to leave some links. I'm going to drop some um, some resources for you. Go and read about string formatting. Number two, go and learn about variadic functions. Two very important things. If you're able to do that, now you realize that the project becomes very doable for you. Then, one last thing, you realize that now with the advanced stacks, ALX is just telling you to um, execute more functionality to your printer project. And each functionality is a file. Okay, so if I come to, let's say, this task is asking me to handle the following conversion specifier, which is P. And you know that percent %P, percent %P prints the address of a variable. It's a pointer. So when you want to print the address of a variable, you use percent %P. So all this task is trying to tell you is that um, create the functionality that handles pointers. And immediately, you know that you have to create a file for that. So each question is a file of your own choosing. You can name the files anyhow you want. So for something like this, you can name a pointer.t, right? No one, you don't worry about the names of the files. You don't have to go to GitHub and copy someone's code and their file names. Just name the files in a descriptive way that you think um, you can name it. And then each task is a file of your own choosing. So name it. So for some, for instance, for something like this, ALX is talking about flags. So we see the handle the following flag characters for custom specifiers. And over here, it's talking about length. And over here, it's talking about custom conversion specifiers. Over here, it's talking about non-custom conversion specifiers. Now, let me just get rid of this and show you what they're talking about. Okay, you already know what printer function does. So assuming, um, let me just show you this and then I'll conclude, right? So assuming I wanted to print f let me just bring in some symbols just to make this really clear so i'm bringing this these symbols okay so that you can have a fair idea of the width uh, if i want to print let's say an integer percent d which you know and i'm going to say that i want to print a number 17 okay now when i run this code let me put it on the new line I run this code, it's just going to print the number 17. That is it. You see right here. So it prints the number 17. I don't know why I'm having a problem here, though. Okay, I know. I see where the problem is coming from. This code is supposed to come here instead. I hope you guys are there. So I'm going to print this, and it gives me the number 17 inside the, those vertical signs that I created. So this is the usual thing that you know, but there, there's also something called a width of a function. So if I, assuming I wanted to add a width to this integer, I can just come between the percent and the D and I'm going to put the figure 10 over there. And when I print this, you're going to realize that suddenly there's a width that has been created before the integer. So anytime you see width for printer function, this is simply what they are referring to. I put a, a figure between the percent and the integer and it created this this entire space you see over here and then they also have something they call flags a flag is some something that you um give to a variable to um left align or right align it right so for instance if i put a negative a dash flag over here a negative sign and i run this code now it's suddenly gonna give me a right align so you see that this time around the 17 has been pushed forward and then there is a space over here but when it was positive, the um, 17 was right aligned. When it was negative, now the 17 is left aligned. It's very simple. So this is what is referred to as width. So the 10 over here is a width number and the dash is what is referred to as a flag, right? And that is very simple. 
And then they also have something, the plaintiff also has something that um, is referred to as a precision. Okay, so for instance, this time around, I want to, let me put these uh, vertical signs here so that at least I give you some. With, let's see, this time around, I want to print a float. So I go percent F, and then the float that I want to print is, let's say, 5.0. 5.0 all right now a float number can take a precision so now instead of just printing 5.0 let me just print run this code and let's see what we get first so for this code we get 5.0000000 but what if i didn't want five decimal places i only wanted two so that is where the precision comes in so over here i'm just gonna put a precision here and i'm gonna say let's say i want 0.2 two decimal places so now when I run this code, I'm going to have only two decimal places. So you can see 5.00. This is what is referred to as the precision. Okay. So the, for the first one, we handle the width. So this is the width, the 10 you see over here. Then the second one, we handle the flag. This dash you see over here is the flag. And then the third one, we handle the precision. So the precision you see over here is the 0.2. It gives this flows value a certain number of decimal places. And you can see that printf is able to do all these. So what ALX is asking you to do at, with some of the tags is that for some of them, they're asking you to handle flags. For some of them, they're asking you to handle format specifiers. And then for some others, they're asking you to handle precision. And then for some others, they say that you can ignore all of them. So for, let's say, this first and second task, they say that ignore the flag, ignore the precision, ignore the width, ignore the length, so you're not supposed to bother yourself with your with the functionality of your printer being able to do all that. But for the advanced task number seven, you have to handle some flags, which is this. You have to handle the space. You have to handle this pound sign. And then for the thing, basically, that's it. For the failed with the precision and then the, um, the flag, it's only advanced task number seven that is requiring it. The rest are just format specifiers and binary numbers. So I think for the task number uh, four, it's talking about, I think, hexadecimal number. Yes, and hexadecimal number. So you're supposed to create a format specifier that takes care of the capital S and then the small x. All right. Now, back to my conclu concluding statements again. So basically, all I'm trying to say is that where is my Google? Yeah, here you are. Basically, all I'm trying to say is that printf is easy. ALX is not asking too much from you. They only give you two mandatory tags. If you do that, you have 100%. So go and read about string formatting. Then go and read about variadic functions. I'll drop some resources for you in the page and all. Then Take your time and go through the requirements of the project. For today, all you have to do is to get a fair idea of, okay, this is what printf is able to do. And then I'm also come, have to come up with a way of finding out how to do those things that printf is able to do in code. And I've already told you that you're going to use variadic function. And I've also told you that each task, you see, you can create a file for it. Basically, that's all you have to do for the project. If there are any questions, I'm going to open the floor now. You can quickly go ahead and ask before we go our separate ways. Are there any questions? Yes, Daniel. Yeah. Are we still meeting the same time? Yes, tomorrow we are meeting at 6 p.m. Ramna, do you have something to say? <laughs> um, not really. I have posted most of the resources I think will be beneficial. Awesome. To the task box. So um, I hope everybody is able to access it. I noticed that some people joined later and some kept just connection. So I reposted most of the links. Awesome. Make sure you, yeah, make sure you um, look through them. They are mainly on how to collaborate. Yeah, and the right. Um, how to customize your own video. That's just like, by the way. Um, there's this very deep video on how to understand the special characters, format specifiers, and awesome. things. Awesome. And, um, so, 
Lovely. I also have this uh, recorded for part of the day. Great. You have it's like you have solved everything for them. You guys are you guys are blessed. <laughs> Yeah, if they are into the access to uh, staff. Because I think once we're on the call, they will need access to staff. That's true. Um, so, I've also copied and pasted them on the for seven. Yes, excellent. Okay. So, so, that would be great then. Yeah. So, that would be about it for me. I actually have to pop out for example. The live learning session. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. So, I think yeah, that has been good. Have a real <laughs> yes, that's what I'm gonna work on. There, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to I'm going to add it for it. Yes, exactly. She's afraid. She's afraid that you worry her, but <laughs> um, anyway, but like, yes, yeah, like you said, it's nothing um, big that you have to be scared of, and again, it's just like for the mandate so if able to solve those ones that's like they can have the prison that's right yes so just handle it and sit and then you'll be fine but then again i mean since you have a different exchange you have a different person you can just post them and they can be, um, see how best you can support you amazing so you don't have a person you can my friend of the course hi friend <laughs> Thank you. But I hope you've understood what I'm saying. Okay. I know um, it was a bit rushed, but at least it's an okay. overview. Okay. Um, hello, Mr. Yeah, I want yeah. to ask that if the whole reason for collaboration um, such that uh, maybe we know we've been given so many uh, functions to it, like maybe even if you are doing the advanced search and like mm-hmm. as you see that every function has a file that we are created for it. So that we may maybe as you may Leo is my partner and we collaborate with and yeah. maybe I, I do I create file one for the task zero and maybe Leo creates file uh, file two for task one. That like is 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 that a whole reason for the collaborative thing? I mean I know we are doing it good, but in case I do maybe task one, not that we are doing it together, but maybe right. I created the, the task one file and I did it in my uh, repository. Uh, Leo pulls it to his repository and maybe that's task I just want to understand that. Is, is that how we go about this project? Even if we are doing it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or one person, one person takes all the files in their repository and the other gives to Yeah. No. Um, yeah, do you want to go to that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Talk about it. Uh, we are actually talking about Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Isha, if I had your questions right, you are asking um, how to go about the collaboration. Um, I think about the file creating and doing the work together is um, between you and your partner, maybe. Um, unfortunately for me, my experience for Quake wasn't the best. Um, I literally had to do everything from scratch by myself. Um, uh, the collaboration was quite hectic, but you just can't do the work by yourself because you can do everything and you put everything to your own industry. You still need your partner to pull and push. That's why I use the pull and push method. There are two methods, pull and push and the branching. I don't recommend the branching because it's not between our friends. So just stick with the pull and push method as I have added the method. So you can check them to see the steps on how to do that. But basically, what's going, what's going to be done is, however you decide to go about the work, like if one person decides to do the work, if you decide to do the work, you share the work amongst yourselves. Bottom line is, these are the important things that you should remember. The repository should be in one person's GitHub account. That's a must. Like, the minute you talk or you um, save the repository in two accounts, it's a zero. So, if you are two partners, partner A creates a repository in their GitHub account. 
they send an invite to partner B. Partner B will accept the invite, close the repository. So you know when you are closing in your terminal, you usually use your um, personal access token and then you use your username and then the repository name to, to close. But if partner A takes that account, it means the username is partner A's username. When partner B is filming the account, they do not change partner A's exact name. They just add their personal access token. And once that is done, once that is done, the collaboration begins. Now, whoever takes a file at any point in time and pushes, whoever is on the other end going to revisit the repository must be against me. Even if the other person just pushes the file without editing anything, once you are going to go back into the repository, you have to do a git. Make sure you always get who is pushed to avoid conflict. Now, you can't do all the files in your repo and then um, just make the other partner get through. The minute you do that, there's no collaboration, there's no problem. Um, you know, tomorrow, if you have time, Mm-hmm. Maybe, or if you go to other videos, they will see how the the collaboration is and the commit and the insights. Because at least the collaboration should be a 40 percent. So let's say if you are pushing the files and you do like 20 comments, and your partner does a big thing, oh, it's not it. But if your partner does a big thing, that means if they push, they only have one comment. And that's very poor collaboration because then it's like, 20 comments as against one comment. That's like 90-10% collaboration. And you get there. So if you look at, uh, I think when you open this internet, you can see contribution was 100%. So contribution is called as well. And note that the weight of the printed project is 5. Unlike the other projects, you can that is 1, 1, 1, 1. The weight of the printed project is 5. So if a great is a bit sticky and you're not performing the printed project, it's going to drop you down, which is going to affect you. I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm just basically saying that because the project, the mandate is just two percent. Whatever the case is, you focus on getting those two percent right, it will be a hundred percent, and then your average is safe. You get it. So, um, yeah, basically, I don't know if I answered your question for her, but essentially, collaboration has to change. You have to work in sync. Hello, so I noticed you left the call, so you might have missed some, some aspects of my explanation. But yeah, my network was messing up. But I understand what you said. I understand what you said. I just wanted to understand the case of not as working with it, but we are working together. Mm-hmm. However, just get to, to make sure that we are, I think we are, yeah. But I understand what you yes. said. Yes. So you have to work in things. Whatever the case, you have to work in it. Make sure that your commit, your collaboration is at least 40 60 percent. You don't have to have a lot of commit than your partner. Oh, okay, okay. I think what you just said is the uh, answer to my question. Great, okay. And um, you, your meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I realized that I was talking on me, so I just had to take myself off so this is what Arab now was talking about when you go into your github you see these tabs up here you're going to see one of them called insights okay so this um repo that so this is what i was talking about when you look at the tabs up here in your github one of the tabs is insights when you click on that insight you're going to see the contribution graph right over here and then you're going to see the percentage contribution of you and your partner for this repository i'm here alone so you're not going to see, I mean, the, the contribution graph. But if you go into um, other repositories that are collaborative repositories, you're going to realize that the insight is going to show the contribution graph so that the the range shouldn't be too um, disparate. Okay, at least if it's 60, 40, it's not bad. If it's 70, 30, then maybe that's that's not cool. But at least 50, 50 is the best. But I'm not sure you guys who have 50, 50 probably end up having around. Having around maybe 50 something or 60, 40 thereabout. 